Welcome back. In this short recording, I'm just going to go through point five and point six here on the of the least ten point. So defining a data types and grouping of variables. So as would have been mentioned in the first recording of these uh, set of recordings, I would have mentioned that when you're defining a data your data type, um, that wouldn't necessarily by itself be seen as data manipulation. But what we can see when we do when we look to see what the type of data we actually have, that this can lead to issues then. Okay, and we know that we have certain issues with this because we know what the age measurement that one of the measurements is written in the 60, so we know that that's going to be a concern. But, so we know that, but how do we find that by using our R script? And then also with the gender measurement, we know that it should be binary outcome, but it's actually going to come out to be tertiary. We know that because we're dealing with a small data frame, but what if it was a larger data frame? How would we find these participants that are causing a small bit of an issue? Okay, so we're going to kind of be looking at it as if we're flying blind and don't actually know what the answer is. Okay. So what we're just going to look at here is, I just call it checking data types, and I would always, I would always be doing this at the start when I actually, ha when I have given data, and definitely where I find it of use is more so when the categorical data. More often than not, a lot of the numerical data is kind of okay generally, but the categorical data can be an issue. Okay, so let's look at categorical data first. So if we look at our gender measurements, so we in the second recording we looked at changing the name of that variable from gender of participants to gender. So we just like to see is it a factor? Okay, so so we reference our data frame and then mention the measurement here. Is it a factor? And you can see here when I press Control Enter, it comes out as false. It's not a factor. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make it a factor because that's generally how we'd actually handle something like this. So what we'd say then in this case then is we will say dice, so we'll mention the data frame that we're focusing on, mention the measurement that we're interested in within the data frame, and now what we're going to do here is we're going to make it a factor. Again, we're kind of flying blind that we actually don't know that there is that M measurement in it, okay? So uh, as factor, diet, dollar sign, gender, okay? So if I run that, it's now, it's we're, uh, we're after setting it as a factor, so if I go up to my line 63 here and run this, it's now going to come back true. Okay, so we think, look, that's great. Now, just a way then of just, I suppose, checking it. And now you could say, look, maybe we should we would do this before if we defined it as a factor. But I suppose sometimes I'd nearly just do this automatically, and then I'd kind of worry about, oh, I wonder what types of uh, levels there are to the factor. So if we just look at generating a table, so for our gender measurement, we'll see that when we generate the table there, that we're actually going to end up with females, M, and males. So quite clearly here we have a measurement, an M measurement, that should have actually been stated as male. Okay, so we've isolated that, so that's fine. So we can go back to our raw data, find where that is, we can see where it is, and so on like that. Now we want to change it. Okay, so the thing is, when we, want, when we change it, we want to have a track record of doing that. So we're focusing on the diet data frame, we're focusing on the gender measurement within that, and what we're trying to do here is reference a particular participant. Okay, so we're looking at a participant whose gender whose gender is classified as M. That's what we're interested in. So we're focusing on that participant. And that participant, what we want to do is we want to change that participant's information from being M to actually being male. Okay, so we're looking at the gender data frame. Uh, sorry, the diet data frame, the gender measurement within that, but within that gender measurement, we're focusing on where gender is just equal to M. And you can see there that you're saying double equal. So you're not going to be equating anything here. You're actually basically saying where it actually overall is aligned with a, an output of M. And when you find that participant, what we want to do is we want to change that participant from M to being male. Now, if we just go up to the data frame here, so we can see, look, it's down to our G participant. Okay, so with the G participant here, so if we just do this first run, that line of code, so everything seemed to be kind of okay, come back up here, look, G is now going to be male. Absolutely perfect. That's great. Okay? Now, the only issue with this, and this is just down to the way that we actually created it as a factor on line 64 here, and then went off and kind of realized that there was actually an issue to a factor. If we run line 65 again, you can actually now see that we're actually coming up with M being zero. Okay, now that's because we defined in line 64, we defined gender as an actual factor. Okay, and so when it was defined as a factor, it set all the categories, the subcategories to that factor as levels. So in this case, then M would actually be set as a level. So we need to kind of overwrite that. We need to get rid of that. So what we're just going to do here in this case is we're actually just going to state explicitly what the labels to our actual factor are. Okay, so we're going to look at data. Sorry, not data. We'll say diet dollar sign gender, and we're going to look at the factor itself, 
and we look at the measurement. And this time now, what we're going to do is we're explicitly going to give it the labels. We're going to say the labels are female and male. Okay, so we're just going to run that. All right, so this is, and did I close that bracket? I did close the bracket. So we're looking at the gender measurement again. Within the gender, me gender measurement, we're explicitly saying that the labels are female and male. So we'll run that line of code. Everything seems to be okay. Now, as a sanity check, did everything kind of work out fine? I'm just going to go back up and run line 65 again. Actually, instead of running it again, I'm just going to copy and paste it down here. So I'm going to run that line, but just paste it down. And now we can see we have the two categories. Okay, so that, and that's obviously quite good. So I suppose in a way you could say, look, we made life very hard for ourselves by explicitly straight away going from checking to a factor that is it a factor. Maybe you'd say, look, if we checked it as a factor, it came up with false, then we should maybe look at doing line 65 next just to make sure is there anything up with the measurement and then going off setting it as a factor. And there's nothing wrong with that. And in practice, that's the way I would do it. But I, would, I suppose I would often encounter people that would say, check, is it a factor? It would come back as false, and then they just make it a factor. Then they'd go off and look at the attributes to the factor. And then if you do it in that order, you're going to have this issue that we had here. So that's why I just said for the recording, I'll just put that in. Okay. The next one then is we're going to look at the quantitative measure. Now, again, and I would have said this in the previous recording, I will upload this script uh, to the YouTube channel. And when I upload it, um, I'll include uh, some additional comments so that a lot of these lines, there will be some context to it. Okay? So I know I'm putting in a few small comments here at the start of each section, but that's just more for, uh, I suppose, uh, actually very, making it very clear look what the sections are for this recording at the moment. Okay, so what we're going to now look at is the numeric side. So we have a numeric measurement, or one that we hope is numeric, and it's going to be the age. Okay, again, we know that we have a problem with this, so it's going to come back with false. Okay, so it, it is not numeric, so that's fine. Then you say, look, why? I wonder why it's not numeric. So there's loads of ways that you can go off and explore it. I find just maybe a useful one to start off with, it, to use at the start, is maybe just to generate a table when you generate a table, which is ultimately a frequency table. Now, it's not that the frequency table is overly fancy or anything like that. Usually, when it comes to frequency tables, I would use the summary tools package and then use the freak or the C, uh, C table function. Um, but this is just to actually give us an idea to what's actually happening with the data. So that's why I'm just using this table function at the moment. With this table function, then we can see, look, that there's a 60 SIXTY that actually should have been 60. So what we need to do is we need to find that 60 and we need to replace that 60 with actually 60. And this is very similar to the line 66 code up here. So where we're going to find a particular issue and then we're going to relabel it. And the main thing when we do something like this is that like the line 66 or what our line 72 will show here is we'll actually have the transparency of actually doing the manipulation. So we're going to focus on the diet again. So that's our data frame. We're focusing on the age measurement. Square brackets within that age measurement, we're focusing on where age is equal to 60. Like that. Okay, we're focusing on where it's equal to 60. Now, and then we're going to change that 60 as the spelling of 60, the strength, to actually the number 60. Now you can see here when I'm using, and it was the same up here when, uh, for line 66, when we're using strings or characters, we put them under inverted commas. I don't need to put 60 under inverted comma because it's actually numeric itself. So I'm just going to replace that. We, as a sanity check, did actually work here? We can shoot back to this one, and we can now see look, participant P is now actually 60. To make sure is it actually okay then with this we can actually just check is it actually numeric it might still not be numeric here because of the issue we had at the start but we'll just check it here is it numeric it comes back as false it's not numeric so now we actually can just go off and make it numeric so we can say diet dollar sign age um what are we saying here as numeric okay and there we have it. if we go back to line 73 we can see Happy days, it's all worked out. Okay, so you can see, look, this takes a bit of time. Now, in practice, when I have a large volume of data, I would actually probably just look at creating a for loop that would be checking all the measurements in one go. But just given that this is kind of nearly an introductory, um, I suppose, recording on data manipulation techniques using R Studio, I felt it would be just easier to nearly look at each measurement individually. But in practice, and maybe it's something I would do for a later recording, I would look at maybe doing a for loop and where I'd actually do a kind of a check on all the measurements to whether they are factors or to where they, they are numeric and so, so on like that. Okay, so that's that part. The next part we're going to just look at is grouping a variable. So as I think the age one would be a good one to use maybe in this case. So if we're just looking at putting it into categories, I think it's just often it's something that I would use. It's where you kind of have a continuous measurement and you might want to make it categorical. So some, so we look at, put in 0.6 here and I just say call a grouping variable. 
Now, again, this might not be something that you're interested in, but um, but look, I said I'd work through it anyway, okay? So if we look at the age measurement, so I'm just going to do the range just to kind of get an idea of what our age measurement is here, even though we actually have it in the frequency table above. But I'm just going to run this line off, and we can see that for the range that our minimum yeah, I suppose the youngest person in our study is 45, the oldest person is 64. So just this is more just an illustration of how to actually group a measurement. And I'm going to use the if-else function here. I'm just going to group it into three categories. I'm going to put uh, people into people that are in their 40s, people that are in their 50s, and then people that are, that are in their 60s. I'm just going to group it that way. Okay. Now, you might find if you're doing a, a study and you're measuring age, you might want more than three categories. And that's absolutely fine. You just kind of add on more categories uh, from the script that I'm just generating here. So I'm just going to create an age, and I'm going to call it a group measurement in this case, and I'm going to use the if-else function. So what I'm looking at then is, I'm, so I'm just calling the measurement age group, okay? So then I'm going to say diet, dollar sign, uh, age, okay? So I'm looking at this, I'm creating this new measurement, but the new measurement is based on this age measurement within the diet data frame. And I'm going to first say code it as anybody that's less than or equal to uh, we'll say, I'm uh, sure I could say less than 50, maybe something like that. Less than 50, that's nice and neat. Anybody that's less than 50, call them one. Okay, I'm going to label them as one. And then if else, diet, dollar sign age, less than 60, code them as two. And if somebody's not coded as, sorry, that should be 60 there. So what we're looking at here is if somebody's less than 50, we're coding that person as one. If then if if they're not less than 50, then are they less than 60? If they're less than 60, then code them as two. And then after that, if they're not less than 60, we're going to code them as three. Okay, we know from our range of data that we've everyone is between 45 to 64. So this actually covers everybody. Okay, so we're just going to run that off here. There we have it. And now, so what this is, and this is kind of like our... Um, participant ID measurement that we would have created uh, in a previous recording, that we've actually just created a new measurement here, this age group measurement, but we might want to append it onto our actual data frame. Like if we go back up to our diet data frame here, we can see it's not here. Okay, so we, we might like to append it into that. So if we were going to append it, we're looking at the library, um, the dplyr uh, package. Okay, now we don't, I don't need to write this here, but I'm just putting it in there more just, I suppose, as a point of reference to the pack, to the function that we're actually using. So we're going to focus on our diet data frame, and then we're going to use the mutate function again. And here we're saying diet, and we're going to look at age group. Okay, something like that. Okay, so we'll do press control enter there for that. We'll press control enter, I'll go up to the diet data frame. I could obviously just view the diet uh, diet measurement, and here you actually see whether if you go up here that we now have our new measurement, which is one, two, three. Just as a check, is that correct? If you look down, our first participant was in the 40s, the second participant was in the 50s, the third participant was also in the 50s. So we should be coding this as one, two, two. And if we come down here, what we can see then is it is coded as one, two, two, and so on. If we look at the tree here, we can see that there's a tree, and that tree relates to somebody that is 64, so that person is in the 60s. Okay, and that, that's brilliant. The last thing that I would just find that would be useful if I do an age category or a grouping variable like this, usually I want to define it then as a factor. If I want to define it as a factor, I might want to state what the levels of the factor actually are, so and then what the labels to those levels would actually be. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to focus on the diet data frame again. I'm going to use the age measurement, age group measurement here, and this time I'm going to explicitly call it a factor. Uh, this is we would have done a similar line of code back up here. Uh, where did we do it on line 67? Where we were actually looking at a factor. Okay, so we're looking at the diet age group measurement here and then I'm going to say look what levels are we using so we're using the levels so the levels relate to what codes we're using so we're using the codes one two three and then what labels are we assigning to those codes so that's what we're just missing from the line 78 where I haven't explicitly said what the labels are so we'll say C and we're going to say this is up to you then how you might want to label so I'll just keep it very simple 40 to 49 50 to 59 and we could say 60 to 69 or greater than 60, whatever you whatever you decide that that really up to when it's when it's your data to how what you feel the what label how the labels uh, I suppose best tell your research story or whatever narrative you're trying to apply. Okay, so if we're looking at this, we're just basically explicitly giving it it saying that age group is a factor, very similar to what we would have done up here with. Um, line 67 where we're explicitly saying something was a factor we're defining what levels we have because we have the codes one two three we didn't need to do this up here for the female male because we didn't actually explicitly create any codes 
So we're saying what the codes we are, which are the one, two, three, and then we're saying what levels are we linking with those codes, okay? And then if we run that off here, so fine, it seems to be all fine up here. If I come up to the diet, uh, data frame, you can see, look, everything is actually coded now, okay? Or we could come down here, or we, maybe we'll just stay here. I could run it off as a table. Run off a table, what I'm looking for is diet, dollar sign, age group. Run that off, and you can see everyone that falls into those categories. Okay, so I think like it's, again, it's, it's something that I would often use is where I have a list of numbers. So it could it could be discrete data, it could be continuous data, and I might want to put it into categories. And this is the approach that I would use to put it into categories again. Like most statistical packages, and something I would have said in previous recordings, there's more than one way of doing these operations. This is just one that I find is nice, uh, especially when you're trying to maybe come to terms with data manipulation techniques. Okay, so that will bring an end to this third part that are, um, to this uh, set of recordings. When you come back for the fourth part, what we're going to look at is imputing for missing values, and then how do we isolate outlier, uh, outliers, and when it's an outlier, which will let it turn out to be a typo, how do we actually uh, change that? Okay, so if you come back, we'll look at point seven and point eight. Thank you.